All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless me here talking real music in real time for some real people out there just like you, just like me. As usual, I've got something to promote like a good band. State cows are there. <laughs> I like how I did that. All right. High and Dry is their latest effort. Another band from Sweden, Steely Dan, Toto in Chicago. In fact, um, in the past, they've had a few very special guests, including Jason Sheff and Bill Champlin and Michael Landau. I mean, this is some really cool stuff right here. And um, well-produced, very melodic, very boat-worthy. So if you have a nice yacht, you know, you have the yacht and you're going to go uh, you're going to go out with lovey. You know, you're going to do the yacht thing um, <clears throat> right here. State cows uh, are there for you. Um, speaking of Chicago, which this has some Chicago tendencies. I just got through watching this stellar <laughs> propaganda documentary. It, well, well, it wasn't propaganda, not total propaganda. Um, Chicago, the last band on stage. They make it sound like, you know, we were under nuclear attack and Chicago at the very last minute decided to stop going on stage, but they were the last band to do it. <laughs> Look, folks, um, this is all about Chicago during the thing demic. They admit during the documentary that they all went to Walgreens and so everybody should be fine. I hope they're going to be fine. You know, there have been a lot of weird stories. That 37-year-old guy, the country singer, just got married and then he died suddenly or whatever. That that was kind of kind of strange. Um, you know, I don't know. You know, there could be this thing where it doesn't affect the older people, but it affects the I don't I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not a medical expert, uh, but there is a movie out there, a documentary that you can watch. And I'm pretty sure I linked it in one of the other videos where I talked about the strange and somewhat mysterious passing of the great Irene Cara, right? There's always somebody that you could talk about uh, very recently. Um, as far as Christine McVie, you know, I'm not connecting those dots. I don't think that was the same deal. But, um, you know, some people might have some suspicions there. Anyway, getting back to Chicago in their documentary called The Last Band on Stage. So the band celebrates all of these people who have left. The documentary is like an apologetic in the sense that everybody who has left, um, they start with Jason Chef, right? They say, you know, hey, Jason, you know, he wanted some time off from the band. You know, I'm kind of doing the Jimmy Pankow, Peter Chivarelli voice, which is going to sound like Dr. Fauci a little bit. You know, he, he wanted some time off. And I said, I said, hey, Jason, how much time do you want off? And he said, you know, three or four months. And I'm like, holy crap, dude. <laughs> holy crap, Batman. We've got tour dates. What, what are you talking about? So. <clears throat> I found out later on, you know, because I was a critic of this at the time when I started doing videos, I was like, Jason Chef, where are you, man? What's going on? And nobody from the band said anything. And Jason was kind of quiet. And Jason wanted privacy, like most people. When you think of it, it's like, dude, what's wrong with you? What you ever get those friends that are like, dude, are you okay? Are you okay? And they're doing it like every five seconds, and you're like, Dude, I'm not okay because you keep asking me if I'm okay. And it's driving me crazy. Stop asking if I'm okay. I was okay until you started in. Anyway, you know, this is my aversion to humanity. Like humanity creeps in and you're just like, please leave me alone. You know, thankfully I have a wife that I love and I have kids and I have enough, you know, to, to keep me... Um, happy because other human beings and their critiques of you when they don't even know you as a person, that can be really frustrating. I'm just putting it out there. You don't have to agree or disagree. I'm just 
I'm doing a little passive aggressive commentary here. So anyway, Jason Chef, he wants out. He's like, I need time to deal with a family crisis. And they're like, dude, we've got tour dates booked. Get away from us. And that's exactly what happened. And then Jason Chef comes in. By the way, um, no, I'm sorry. Jeff Coffey comes in. By the way, um, these names sometimes, because I get confused because I'm older. So I apologize for screwing up the name order here. So Jeff Coffey gets the gig. But we learned during the documentary that the band really liked Neil Donnell. Now, in case you didn't know the story, Neil and Jeff were at the same audition to get the gig. And supposedly Neil had this in the bag. And, you know, Jeff Coffey shows up a little bit late to the party. And by the way, Jeff plays bass and he sings. Unlike Neil Donnell, who tends to hang out by the keyboards, he doesn't play bass, but he does sing. All right. Jeff Coffey comes in, gets the gig because, you know, he follows that same, you know, here's Jason Chef, Peter Cetera, singing bass players. Ah, we've got another one. Good job. Now, the documentary says, hey, you know, Neil Donnell, he was the better singer. Um, but we went with Jeff Coffey because... You know, the guys like the fact that he could play bass and sing. <laughs> Not me, Peter Chivarelli. Now, if I start to sound like Dr. Fauci, I apologize here. Hey, I really liked uh, that guy from Canada, Danelle. All right. But uh, the band, they really, uh, they dug coffee because, you know, he played that guitar thing and he could sing and he sounded better doing some of the 80s material. That's me, by the way, just adding my commentary to it. Look, for you old timers who grew up listening to like Chicago 2, which by the way, they talked about the soundstage and how great Chicago 2 was. And all of those things are true. And the band apparently had to go back in time and kind of learn that stuff. I know Jeff Coffey spent a lot of time really getting into Chicago 2. And he was great during that whole soundstage concert period and he worked really hard you could tell the dude was meant for that gig right but something went wrong now i'm gonna say something and it's just because uh i have this platform and i can do it i know why jeff coffee left chicago i know he left they didn't fire him he left i know why i know at least one reason why he left and it's <sighs> It's pretty depressing. Let me just say uh, something about the environment in the band. It's not the greatest work environment, apparently. If the hierarchy, if the head honchos, if the old timers don't like something that you're doing, um, they're going to overrule you, which is kind of a shame because Jeff Coffey was a tremendous talent. Now, Getting back to the documentary, which focuses on all of the changes and somehow manages to celebrate those changes and make it like a hallmark of the band. Well, Terry Kaff, who was involved in a very unfortunate accident, we'll say it that way, could have been something else. I know there are a lot of conspiracies out there, but we'll just go with the narrative. Okay, it was an accident. Terry did something, and uh, that was the end of Terry. Now, um, since that point, the band has been a bit of a revolving door. Donnie Dacus, um, Dwayne Bailey, um, Chris Pinnock, all of these guys, they had a lot of trouble, and they admitted that, by the way, in the video. We just couldn't find a guy who plays guitar really well. Uh, well, Dwayne Bailey played really, really well until he decided to hang out with Walt Perizader's daughter. Uh, and then Keith Howland became the guitarist, and he's really good, but he left the band too, and it's in the documentary. Um, this whole last band on stage is really to talk about what happened during the thing-demic, 
how Chicago coped with it, how they all went to Walgreens together and did the right thing, but yet they still couldn't get gigs. Then they finally got gigs. They thought they would never play another concert again. Hey, um, in 2020, I know this is crazy, but I think Sturgis happened in 2020. If Chicago wanted to go to Sturgis, which <laughs> which wouldn't have been uh, the right music to be playing in Sturgis, I think the Sturgis people, though, would have respected Chicago for going and actually playing their music there. Instead, you know, you got like 38 Special and a bunch of, you know, country sounding folks going to Sturgis, maybe a few rogue heavy metal bands. I'm trying to think. I think Great White went to Sturgis. But in 2020, there were a few gigs. There weren't many, but the band made it sound like there were no gigs. There was nothing we could do. So, you know, Lee went to his beautiful, palatial home. That's Lee Lochnane uh, in Arizona. You know, Robert went back to California and someone else went to South Carolina and someone went to Ohio. And yeah, it was very dramatic. And we just kept watching the news. I mean, kept watching the propaganda. That's the correct term, which they should be saying. And we realized that we weren't going to have a lot of gigs. And so we hung out and waited. And then, you know, during the documentary, you hear about like, oh, Tris and Bowden, been in the band for 27 years, quits. Um, Keith Howland, toward the end, he quits. Lou Pardini, whose brother or somebody in his family is actually the guy producing the documentary, he leaves. He leaves the band. And they don't say why these people are leaving the band. They just say, hey, change has always been a part of Chicago. And then again, you know, you hear this part in there about uh, Neil Donnell being, you know, a better singer than Jeff Coffey. And we should have just picked him first. But uh, when Jeff Coffey decided to leave, which, you know, is kind of unfortunate since he was picked above the guy who was the better singer. No, but anyway, look, for you old timers who really enjoy like the 70s material, which I do, um, Neil Donnell does a really good job with the 70s stuff. And the band thinks he's kind of like a Peter Cetera clone. In fact, Lee Lochnane said he was better than Peter Cetera. No, 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 <laughs> no. Um, look, uh, he would have to sing a lot better. He's a he's a good singer, but he'd have to sing even better. He'd have to have a more unique tenor than he has, um, which Satara had because he was in a fight and somebody broke his jaw, right? I would say Jason Sheff too has a very original sounding tenor. And I would say Coffee is a guy who kind of he's kind of like a chameleon. He can kind of do whatever you want him to do. He's kind of like Arnel Pineda. He can sing all kinds of different voices. Um, really talented. And he plays bass. Bill Champlin at a concert a couple of weeks ago said that Jeff Coffey was one of the most talented people he's ever worked with. Um, all right. If I could drop this mic, I would drop it because Coming from Bill Champlin, who's won a couple of Grammy Awards, you know, turn this love around after the love is gone. I mean, the guy's pretty talented, right? Bill Champlin sang on Chicago's fastest charting number one songs. It's called Look Away. Anyway, it's just a little, little diversion. You know, they didn't mention Bill, but they went through all of these people, you know, Tris and Bowden leaves, Keith Howland leaves, Jeff Coffey leaves, Lou Pardini leaves, but the band continues on. We are better than the... No, you're not better than the Peter Cetera lineup. <laughs> you know, the 80s lineup with Cetera, the 70s... No, you're not better. You're different, but you're not better. And... Yes, you can still put on a good live show. Nobody's saying that you can't, 
But um, where's, you know, Walt Perizader? Well, they did mention him. Finally, in this documentary, they say, hey, Walter had some heart problems. Uh, and this is before 2020. So we know they're legit. And, um, you know, Ray Herman comes in and he does a great job. And now it's Ray and Lee and Jimmy. And that's your horn section. OK, cool. You know, look, um, some of the documentary was fairly um, interesting to watch. I'm not going to lie. It, it kept me entertained. I always like to hear what these guys are going to say. The part about Jason Chef and the fact that, oh, Jason wanted some time off. I feel like that's almost an answer to some of the videos that I've put out there about this topic where I've said, look, yeah, he needed time off. I didn't know he had a family crisis. And I'm looking at Chicago as an employer. I'm like, hey, guys, have somebody fell in for a few months, but when Jason is ready to come back, maybe you bring him back or, you know, maybe you postpone a few dates. Maybe Jason just figured, look, I'll see how much these guys really appreciate me at this point. And my guess is they don't really appreciate, they know they've got a cash cow because then they put anybody. And I'm not saying this as a, you know, put down on Jeff Coffee, but they're like, okay, we can just replace Jeff Coffee because um, Jeff left. So they can replace anybody. They just keep, and Robert Lamb has said this, you know, Jeff Coffee was a great replacement for Jason Jeff. Neil Donnell, and they're playing up Neil Donnell like he's the second coming of Peter Cetera. And I'm watching this video going, so this is all about how change is the best thing for a rock band. Seriously. And it's also about, hey, why are all these people leaving? They don't address that. They don't talk about it. Um, it's it's not even like a subject in this, not like a, Jeff left because he wanted to spend more time with his family. Eh, wrong answer, by the way. Jason left because he needed to be with his family. Peter left because they gave him an ultimatum. And he wanted a few things after Chicago 17. He deserved a few things. And they said, you know what? You're getting too big for your britches, buddy. And imagine if Satara had stayed with Chicago throughout the 80s, what that would have looked like. Bill and Jason did a great job keeping the thing together. But... Let's do another Chicago 17 with Cetera. A lot of that material on 18, Peter Cetera would have been singing. And I bet Peter would have brought some of his own songs like Glory of Love. What did it win? Like a Grammy, an Oscar, an Emmy. <laughs> but Chicago wanted no part of that, you know. And I know Peter's solo career kind of went a little bit downhill after that, but not any more downhill than what Chicago did. Chicago kind of had a last gasp on Chicago 19. My guess is if they had kept the band together with Danny and Peter, I think they would have gotten through the 80s and been ready for a different sound in the 90s. And rather than doing some weird, obscure Stone of Sisyphus thing, they would have probably put out a great album with Peter. And they could have said, look, we don't want to be road dogs anymore. We'll do a few dates and we'll charge a lot of money and we'll make some, right? We'll make some good money. And as far as the output, we'll put out only good quality music. We won't just throw stuff together for the sake of doing that. And I'm not saying Chicago did that in their post satara years, but it was a different vibe. You know, it's like, hey, we're Chicago and the name commands respect. But when you're listening for great music, it's not just the name that counts. It's actually what's underneath the hood of that car. Is there anything under here that I want to listen to? Yes or no? I know you got the brand. I know you got the logo, 
I know you've got the history and the greatest hits and greatest hits too. And Chicago 17, Chicago 19, Chicago 18. But um, what have you done for me lately? You know what I mean? So anyway, the documentary tends to be a bit on the propaganda side of things. Remember, uh, Peter Cetera called the first Chicago documentary a crockumentary. <laughs> so I don't know if this is quite to that degree of uh, crockery, but it, it's going kind of in that direction. The fact that they uh, don't address why people keep leaving. Brett Simon, he's in, or Simons, he's in this video a lot, and he's no longer in the band. <laughs> Lou Pardini is no longer in the band. I mean, it's just weird. And it's like, okay, guys, do you think you might try to keep some people in the band uh, for a little bit longer, you know, and not, you know, just keep bringing in new people? I mean, look, if if Robert and Lee and Jimmy want to retire, they should just retire and take the name and recruit the best people for these jobs. How about a singing bass player? Can we start with that? A tenor who sings bass and who sounds a little bit like Peter Cetera. There's got to be somebody on planet Earth who can do that job. But uh, in any event, you can go check it out. Chicago, the last band on stage, which I don't know if was true, but it's certainly a dramatic title. And it is pretty interesting viewing. So I would definitely recommend it. Uh, I don't agree with a lot of things in the video, but it shows you how good Chicago's management is. Peter Chivarelli, uh, he's, uh, he's a Chicago, West Side Chicago genius. Let's put it that way. Um, really smart uh, and really persuasive. And if you don't like what he's got to say, he'll probably play a little tune on his violin and uh, get you in line with his way of thinking, if uh, if you know what I mean. All right, uh, that's my video. Um, I better stop talking before I'm put on a list. Um, State Cows, baby. High and Dry, really great album. Uh, like a good band, State Cows are there. Uh, check them out online on the usual streaming platforms. And uh, if you like hard copies of albums, I think you need to go to Japan to order that. Yeah, that's the way things are these days, folks. Um, people aren't buying CDs. It's really a shame. All right, I'm done with this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's a new month. Patreon, a dollar a month, two bucks a month. Whatever you can afford. I know it's rough out there. What I'm hoping is that the government does another stimulus thing and you can just take your stimulus money and just send it to me. I know it's not going to be very valuable, but if you send me a large quantity of it, then, you know, I might be able to make ends meet. All right, people. See you soon.